Bare metal image backups are a powerful backup type in Carbonite Safe Server Backup. They can be used to recover individual files and folders or completely restore backed up drives to new hardware. They have a few special procedures and considerations that set them apart from the other backup types. In this video, we'll cover the two critical setup procedures for bare metal images. First, we'll create the bare metal image backup set, and then we'll create the recovery media. The recovery media is a bootable USB drive or disk image that boots a machine to a Windows recovery environment and restores the backed up drives. Recovery media is necessary to perform a complete bare metal image restore, so we recommend building it right after the bare metal image backup set is created. It can take around 20 minutes to build, but it only needs to be done once for this backup set, and it can be used repeatedly. You should make recovery media before you need it, so it's ready to go in case of an emergency. Okay, let's get started. First, open Carbonite Safe Server Backup, then click Add New Backup Set at the top. If you've just installed Carbonite Safe Server Backup for the first time, the option for creating a bare metal image backup is in a different place, but don't worry, you can't miss it. Carbonite Safe Server Backup will scan and suggest a backup set that fits the environment. I'm going to override this and select only Bare Metal Image, since that's our focus in this video, then click Continue. The Bare Metal Image Backup Confirmation screen appears next. The drives in your server that are eligible for the bare metal images will populate on the right. My system drive is selected automatically. You can choose to select others, but you should take care not to back up any drives where any other backup sets are stored locally. This would create unnecessary redundancy and increase your backup size exponentially. You can choose to back up to disk and cloud on the left. Both are selected by default and we strongly advise using both. This allows you to have both the speed of local backup and added safety of cloud backup. If local backup is selected, you'll have to click Edit and add a location. This location can't be anywhere on any of the drives selected on the right. They're specifically excluded to prevent you from backing up your image backups, which would again cause your backup size to increase exponentially. The full folder path also can't be longer than 45 characters. You can also select a network location such as a NAS, this is actually recommended if possible because any hardware failures that impact the drives you are backing up are less likely to affect a network drive than another local drive or partition. If you're using a network drive, you'll have to ensure that the Carbonite user Windows account can access the location or input a user and a password that already has access to it. Click Verify Access to Network Location to make sure your network location will work properly. You can set the backup schedule and retention for this bare metal image backup below the backup locations. If you'd like to know more about scheduling and retention, you could review our video on scheduling and retention concepts. Click Save and continue to proceed. When the backup set finishes saving, you'll see a confirmation screen. Click Continue and Carbonite Safe Server Backup will prompt you to schedule your first full backup. A full backup is necessary before any scheduled, incremental, or differential backups will be successful, so you should choose as soon a day and time as you can, then click OK. You'll return to your dashboard where you'll see your brand new bare metal image backup set. At this point, your bare metal image backups will take place automatically according to your set schedule. However, if you want the ability to completely restore your selected drives to new hardware, you'll have to create recovery media. After having created the backup set, you'll see a new notification on the right prompting you to do just that. Click Create Recovery Media. You'll see a prompt with a few disclaimers. You can choose to create an ISO disk image, but our recommendation is to use a USB drive. The exact capacity you need depends on the options you select during the creation process. The most basic setups can fit on a half gigabyte drive, but you may need more if you need to include more data such as special drivers for your hardware. You'll be notified during the setup process if the drive is too small, and you can simply cancel and start over with a larger drive. If you're using a USB drive, plug it into your computer now. Please be aware that this will erase any data that is currently on the USB drive, so make sure anything you need has been copied elsewhere. You may also want to disconnect any other USB drives if you can to make sure you can't accidentally select those during the setup. This screen also advises you that this process can take a significant amount of time. Click Continue to proceed, then Next through the introductory screen. You'll then choose to create an ISO or a USB flash drive. I'm using a flash drive, so I'll select the second option and the correct drive in the list of devices below. Click Next. 
you'll see a warning that the contents of the drive will be erased. Make certain you've selected the correct drive, then click Yes. Next, you can add special storage or network device drivers if necessary. This isn't common, but if you do have any hardware installed that requires special drivers to work, you need to include those drivers in the recovery media at this stage so they can be installed during an image recovery process. The next step is configuring the networking. You can set Carbonite Safe Server Backup to automatically configure the network during a bare metal restore, either from a DHCP server or by setting a static IP. You can also choose to connect manually after the restore is done or skip network adjustment altogether. If you don't want to use the automatic option, we suggest selecting manual. After that, you can choose to automatically mount a network share after booting the restored machine. If you choose to automatically mount a share, you'll have to enter the share location and credentials here. Next is locating the Microsoft Assessment and Deployment Kit, or ADK. The ADK is not standard Windows software, so unless you've downloaded it already, you'll have to download it using the link here. This opens a browser to the download page from Microsoft. I'll install it to the default location since that's where the Recovery Media Wizard is set to look. You can choose to join Microsoft's Experience Improvement Program, then you'll have to accept their terms. The default selected features are sufficient, but you can choose others if you like. When you're ready, click Install. This installation can take around 10 to 15 minutes by itself, so we'll skip ahead a bit. When it finishes, click Close. Now you're ready to proceed with creating recovery media. This process can take several more minutes, but just be patient. All you have to do from this point is let it work. When it finishes, your recovery media is ready to go. You'll see some basic instructions on how to use your media on screen. Click Finish. A pop-up appears with a timestamp that your recovery media was created. It's a good idea to label the flash drive with this timestamp, then store it in a safe place. A weatherproof, fireproof lockbox would be a great storage option. Click OK and you're all set. You're now ready to recover bare metal images to brand new hardware using your recovery media. We recommend testing the media to make sure it boots and connects to your backups properly. Testing basically involves beginning the recovery process to make sure the correct options appear, then canceling before actually performing the recovery. We'll review the process of recovering a bare metal image in a separate video. Thanks for watching.